WWE superstar Ricochet reportedly informs WWE that he intends to leave the company upon the expiration of his contract in not too long of a period of time. What is the possibility that WWE could steal Jordan Grace from TNA Wrestling? We'll let you know talks about that. John Moxley, he's set to defend the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship against Tetsuya Naito at Forbidden Door. Several names are announced for the Women's Owen Hart Cup tournament last night on AEW Collision. Orange Cassidy is set to face off against New Japan's Zack Sabre Jr. at Forbidden Door. A rare time limit draw last night on AEW Collision. Scorpio Sky reveals he's returning with a new gimmick last night on Collision 2. Plus, Brooks Jensen appears at an independent pro wrestling show. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off talking about Ricochet, some big developing news when it comes to the WWE superstar who is set reportedly to leave the company. Now, WWE may still run the wrestling world, but soon they will no longer be able to say they own the one and only. According to a report Saturday evening from PW Insider, former Intercontinent and United States champion Ricochet has informed WWE WWE, he intends to leave the company upon the expiration of his five-year contract that he signed back in 2019. Now, considering earlier reports that indicated that Ricochet's deal is up this summer, this news means that his time in WWE is rapidly nearing its end. And PW Insider claims the company is expected to quickly begin writing him out of storylines. Now, of course, those who attended SmackDown Live in Louisville Friday likely saw the first taste of that process as the first ever WWE speed champion lost his title to Andrade in a match taped prior to the June 7 episode of The Blue Brand. Ricochet has also been a part of a recent angle with Ilya Dragunov and Bron Breaker. He lost to Breaker on this past week's episode of Monday Night Raw and lost to Dragunov in the first round of the 2024 King of the Ring tournament last month. Now, PW Insider quoted one source who gave Ricochet all the credit in the world for betting on himself. Still just 35 years old, he will almost certainly make a big splash on the free agent market and could be considered likely to show up in AEW, especially considering a recent interview with Old Foe and current AEW international champion Will Ospreay, who lamented WWE for wasting, wasting Ricochet's talent. Of course, Ospreay, upon the news of Ricochet's contract expiring soon, posted a cryptic picture of them both to social media Media. So the speculation is, does Ricochet go to AEW? Does he go to New Japan Pro Wrestling? What do you think happens with Ricochet? What are your thoughts on this story? Let me know your reaction to it in the comment section below. Now, Jordan Gray, she's set to compete tonight live at NXT Battleground at the UFC Apex. Of course, she's still under contract to TNA Wrestling, but what is the possibility she could end up permanently going to WWE? Well, TNA Knockouts World Champion Jordan Grace has stepped through the forbidden door into WWE twice already this year. First, she followed Mickey James' example by making a surprise cameo, bout in hand, at the Women's Royal Rumble, but she also will challenge Roxanne Perez for the NXT Women's Championship at Battleground this evening. With it being clear that WWE sees something in the TNA star, there have been natural questions over whether they intend to make her a fully-fledged WWE superstar. Now, this is what PW Insider's Mike Johnson said, quote, I don't think they're going to steal her, but I do believe that there may be a concerted effort between the two sides that will likely lead to Grace landing full-time in WWE at the end of her contract, if not sooner. Again, that came from Mike Johnson's PW Insider. He said, quote, it is entirely possible that WWE could make an offer to buy out her contract. Now, it was noted that Grace's deal is expected to expire in the first quarter of 2025, so it's also possible that she will either work with both promotions or just TNA for the remainder of her deal and then negotiate a jump to WWE. Grace's working relationship with WWE is unique in that the promotion rarely brings uh, talent outside for individual appearances, much less a cameo and extended television run. In fact, brands aside, Grace's path in WWE this year has mirrored the way AJ Styles was introduced in 2016 after exclusively signing. She will look to make history and become the first TNA WWE double champion 
champion this weekend after winning her singles debut over Stevie Turner on the June 4 episode of NXT. Now, we've got a load more details on the working relationship between WWE and TNA and other times reportedly that WWE actually reached out to TNA Wrestling. So, of course, Jordan Grace, this comes from Sean Ross Sapper, Fightful Select, made a surprise appearance at the Royal Rumble, helping to establish this working relationship with WWE and TNA Wrestling. That continued in May and June when she returned to the NXT brand. Now, Fightful spoke to Grace back in January about the process, which she said took place within a week of the Rumble. Though she said she wasn't aware of any future plans for the two sides working together, she said she's hopeful they will and that there would be some positive news in that direction. Now, WWE sources told Fightful that Grace made a great impression and served TNA well as a representative, which led to almost immediate interest in her coming back. Fightful was also told that TNA made the process very easy. Based on sources within WWE that Fightful spoke to, they appeared open to this happening again in the future, which of course has ended up being the case. In addition to Scott Demore at the time, Fightful had been told TNA's Vice President of Business Development, Ariel Schnurner, was also helpful. Now, this isn't the first time that WWE has reached out to TNA, as two years ago, they brought in Mickey James. However, James wasn't actually under a TNA contract at the time and could have appeared at the Rumble regardless. That wasn't the only talent WWE reached out to, though, as former Peyton Royce and Billy Kay were contacted in 2022. They were under TNA contract, but they passed on the opportunity to appear in the Women's Royal Rumble. Now, it should be noted that WWE reached out to TNA, unaware that the decision had been made to remove Scott Demore from his position as president of the company. Demore actually accepted WWE's inquiry and tried to buy TNA that week as well. Those that Fightful spoke to in NXT and WWE said their move away from Demore had no bearing on continuing the relationship with TNA Wrestling. Now, since the Royal Rumble, Fightful Sean Ross Sapp has spoken to several women on the WWE roster who have indicated that they'd love to appear on TNA. TNA programming as well. One specifically said she believes it'd be a great opportunity for talent to cross promote and give themselves angles outside of WWE that could help create buzz. Now, Natalia outright mentioned Jordan Grace to fight for long camera, someone she'd like to work with. One NXT higher up mentioned Steve Macklin as an actual crossover fit, noting there are a few people in the wrestling industry, a uh, few people in the wrestling industry more familiar with NXT and the performance center process than Macklin himself. They were, they were well over a dozen WWE talent that Fightful spoke to that were also open to appearing in TNA and all of them said they expected something of that nature to happen sooner rather than later. Amongst the NXT talent that Corey Brennan spoke to, there is significant interest in working with the TNA roster with Leon Slater, Josh Alexander and more names being spoken of highly amongst the NXT roster as potential opponents. So obviously a lot to get into there, but what do you think of Jordan Grace's future? Do you think eventually she ends up in WWE full time? What do you think about the crossover between WWE and and TNA Wrestling, is it just the beginning? Will it stop? Let me know your reaction to it in the comments section below. Now, some big news coming out of the Dominion event that happened today because we're going to get Mox versus Naito 2. On the marquee for New Japan Dominion was the Lumberjack match for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship between Evil and the champion John Moxley. Now, before the match started, Evil and fellow members of House of Torture took aim at Bushiroad CEO Takagi Kidani, who was seated, seated at ringside. Evil spray painted him and the crowd actually cheered for it. In the end, Moxley retained the title after hitting Evil with a Death Rider onto a barbed wire baseball bat. Moxley celebrated in the ring with Tiger Mask, Shota Umino, Yuji Nagata, Togi Makabe, and Hiroshi Tenzan. Moxley would grab the microphone and stated that if anyone wants a shot at the bout, step up and out came Tetsuya Naito. Naito then threw out the challenge to Moxley for an IWGP World Heavyweight Championship match at the AW New Japan Forbidden Door pay per view on June 30th. It was at Windy City Riot in April that Moxley defeated Naito to capture the title so that match is now confirmed what do you think happens in that one at forbidden door do you think moxie retains or is naito going to get the bout back now the own heart foundation tournament the women's side of things we've got a much clearer picture on what that looks like last night after aw collision on the aw double or nothing kickoff show tony khan and martha hart announced the return of the owen hart cup tournament with the winners of the men's and women's tournaments receiving world title shots at all in at wembley stadium later this summer until saturday night none of the female competitors had yet been announced but that changed in a big way on aw collision 
following her under two minute beatdown of Robin Renegade, Chris Statlander said she would make history as the first person to hold both the TBS Championship and the AEW Women's World Championship, becoming the first woman to enter the Owen Hart Cup. Later in the broadcast, Lexi Nair interviewed former TBS champion Willow Nightingale, who won the 2023 Women's Owen Hart Cup. Nightingale said it was only right that she entered this year's tournament and told Statlander she hoped to see her there. Statlander turned, of course, on Nightingale and ended their friendship at Double or Nothing. Later in the show, Women's World Champion Timeless Tony Storm defeated Lady Frost and called Mariah May over to the apron. Storm told her protege that she'd never had anyone look out for her when she was coming up in wrestling, so Storm would look out for May. Storm then demanded that May be entered into the tournament and promised to be with her every step of the way. Now, while no start date for the tournament has been announced, the finals will take place on July 10. That episode of AEW Dynamite will take place in Owen Hart's hometown of Calgary, Alberta, Canada at the Calgary Stampede. Now, Orange Cassidy, his opponent for Forbidden Door, has seemingly been revealed. AEW and New Japan and CMLL Forbidden Door officially has its fifth match and a first non-title contest. In a video package on Saturday's AEW Collision, New Japan star Zack Sabre Jr. laid out the challenge for AEW's Orange Cassidy, demanding that Cassidy meet him in the ring on June 30. AEW fans rejoice you are listening to the dulcet tones of Zack Sabre Jr., said Sabre Jr. in the video package. We are fast approaching that magical time of the bloody year, the naughty door, and it would not be complete without the greatest technical wrestler in the world, Zack Sabre Jr., and this year, I'm returning for some unfinished business. Freshly squeezed orange bollocks. Uh, if you've got the juicy bits, you'll get your ass to New York June 30. Forbidden door, I'll see you there, darling. Sabre Jr.'s mention of unfinished business refers to last year's Forbidden Door, where Sabre Jr., along with Daniel Garcia and Katsuri Shibata, failed to capture the AEW International Championship from Cassidy in a four-way match. Sabre Jr. wasn't pinned or made to submit during the match, making a return engagement a logical choice. Later in the broadcast, Cassidy, who's already having to deal with the dissolution of best friends, having been turned on by Trent Beretta and Chris Statlander, seemed mostly just to be annoyed that Sabre Jr. was adding to his woes, but the match was was made official before the show went off the air. Now, this will be the first one-on-one -on -one match between the two men, both of whom have appeared on every Forbidden Door card so far. In addition to last year's international championship match, Sabre Jr. and Cassidy both lost high-profile Forbidden Door matches in 2022. Sabre Jr. to the debuting uh, Claudia Castagnoli, who filled in for an injured Brian Danielson, and Cassidy to then New Japan star Will Ospreay, who ironically now holds the international championship. So, um, let me know your thoughts about that match being made official for the show too. Now, a rare time limit draw last night on AW Collision in a tag team contest. Now, the opening tag team match on last night's Collision, uh, live from the Council uh, Bluffs, ended in a rare time limit draw. Kicking off Collision, the Blackpool Combat Club team of Claudio Castagnoli and Wheelie Utah took on FTR's Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler. The match ended with a submission hold from Castagnoli in place, but Cash Wheeler not submitting, meaning as the bell rang, there was some confusion. AW Collision ring announcer Bobby Cruz then noted that the 20 minute time limit draw had been reached and the match was ruled as that a draw. With Dax Howard obtaining a mic to encourage five more minutes, which the fans and BCC were very much in favour of, instead the excitement was interrupted by the arrival of Brandon Cutler. Appearing as a proxy for the Young Bucks, he stated that there would be no additional time granted and ended up taking a swing in the middle of the ring from Claudio for his troubles as well as a shatter machine from FTR. Casting Lolo would get on the mic and tell FTR that any time they wanted to fight again, the BCC would be happy to oblige. So a rare time limit draw last night on Dynamite. Now, Scorpio Sky, he's set to return with a brand new gimmick, seemingly, to AEW television. Since recently returning to AEW television in the form of vignette, Scorpio Sky hasn't wrestled yet, but he has been re-establishing his character. In last night's intriguing segment, Scorpio Sky spoke with new intensity as he sought to connect with the AEW fan base since his return. He said, quote, I've been listening and I hear you. There's a gap in this company. You feel it. One by one, all of your heroes have fallen. Who else have you got? They say an open hand is not as strong as a closed fist. Now it's time for us to come together and standing on the backs of those fallen heroes, we can reach the stars. I will be your hero. I will be your voice. And eventually I will be your champion because I'm here for you. 
So Scorpio Sky, of course, he hasn't wrestled in AEW since September with appearances in Ring of Honor in October before being sidelined due to another injury. The former TNT champion did reunite on screen with former Men of the Year tag team partner Ethan Page in Ring of Honor in early 2024. Of course, Page has since left AEW in Ring of Honor, signing with WWE. He's set to make his NXT in-ring debut tonight against Trick Williams for the NXT Championship. And finally, speaking of NXT, there's been this storyline recently about Brooks Jensen, and it's continued over into an independent pro wrestling show. Now, in a video posted on Twitter, it was revealed that Brooks Jensen showed up at a show for Bullpen Professional Wrestling in Bowdoin High School Gym in Georgia yesterday on June 8th. Bullpen Professional Wrestling is run by Brooks Jensen's father, a former WWE superstar in his own right, Bull Buchanan. Jensen shared the video and wrote, I am working for you now, a reference to fans questioning whether his uh, recent situation and comments have been real or a storyline or anything like that. Now, what's been really going on is Jensen has been working a storyline that he's frustrated with how he's being used in NXT which has led him to being refused entry onto the Performance Center premises and other NXT events. The latest chapter prior to yesterday saw Jensen appear at the PC during a commercial break at this past Tuesday's NXT taping. The incident wasn't shown on TV as part of the show but a video from a fan went around on social media of Jensen shouting at commentators Vic Joseph and Booker T before being pulled away, pulled away by security. Now Fightful recently reported that plans for the storyline have been likened to Grayson Waller and Shawn Michaels' storyline from a couple of years ago, which saw NXT booker Shawn Michaels appear on the screen. So we'll wait and see, of course, how that one plays out. But there you go, guys. There's latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.